Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and today we are going to take a look at the new Sonia G Fundamental brushes. So her original Fundamental series came with the red to black gradient handles with the barrel style, very nice lacquer. These have been kind of out of stock for quite a while and I was curious about what was going on. I knew she was updating some of these so she has released her new Fundamental set. And I want to mention that these were gifted to me by Sonia G and Beautylish, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. But we are going to take a look at the original designs. Four of these new, four of the six new brushes are actually from the original series. We also have another repeat from a, the Kiyaki, the original Kiyaki set, and a new brush as well. So we're going to take a look at these as well as some comparisons and some demos. So let's get started. So if you're not familiar with Sonia G's blog, she has a blog called SweetMakeupTemptations.com and she has a very detailed breakdown of her brushes, comparisons, the decisions that she's made while creating all these brushes, what's around, what's discontinued and so forth. So I'll leave that linked down below in the description box. But just a brief summary of what she stated in her blog post about these brushes. In regards to the original fundamental brushes, which again have these barrel style handles, we had the base one brush, which I actually did not get that one, um, but that has been replaced by the Fusion Sheer Buffer, which is her newest buffer brush. So that would be this. So this is in place of the base one. Then we have the Sculpt One brush here, which is the original, and it is now called the Fan L. We have the same head, same brush head, um, but we do have different handles. We'll look at that in just a second. The Sculpt 2 brush is now Fan M, which is this one here. And again, I will show you the original to that when we get to that one. We had a Sculpt 3, which has been replaced by the Fan Pro. It is the same brush shape head and so forth, except we do have undyed goat hair here instead. So this is the Fan Pro, which replaced Sculpt 3. We have Sculpt 4, which is now going to be Fan A, which is this one. You can see that this one does have a different shape, so we will get to that. So this is the same as the original Sculpt 4. The face one is now the Buffer Pro, and I do have a video on that along with the original face one. I'll leave that linked down below in the description box as well. And then we have the face two, which has been renamed for this new set, and this is going to be the Soft Buffer. So you can see mine's a little dirty. I did use it for one of the demos, so we'll get to that in a second. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to go through each of these brushes. I have demos for them, and then we'll go through comparisons. All right, so let's start off with the Fan L. And you can see that we now have these gorgeous walnut handles from Sonia G. One of the new things is the logo. I think that's upside down there. Uh, so you can see that we do have the logo now on the brush. It is a little hard to see on this one because the handle is deep and it's in black. We also have a label here on this side. We have the matte black ferrules and uh, I just had a little tape residue on, on my brush. So we have the matte black ferrules and this is the original sculpt one. So you can see the difference in the handle sizes, but our length is the same, our brush head is the same. Now this fan brush, I really like this one for all over face powder, if you're doing a light dusting of powder. The curvature of the fan shape allows you to get under the eye so you don't need to use a separate brush if you don't want to. But what this one really excels at is bronzer and contour. So you can see in the demos here that this is really great because you can turn it on its side. Depending on which way you use it, you get a different amount of pressure from the bristles. The bristles on this, we do have undyed goat hair for this brush, but it's not your traditional Psycho Ho that Sonia G uses. This one here is actually going to be called, I'm, my pronunciation of this is not great, but Hakutatsuo, 
<laughs> uh, bristles and they are also a type of goat hair but this, these are slightly thicker slightly stronger fibers than the psycho ho and this allows it to kind of fan out buff out a little bit more this is something she talks about in her blog post so definitely check that out if you're interested in more information but this is what allows it to get that fluffy shape it has a little bit more resilience and it gives you just a little bit more control over the bristles for such a large face brush here. Now, as for comparisons, I don't really have too many comparisons. I don't have another fan brush this size, but you can see it is exactly the same as a Sculpt One. Let's take a look at it with our other fan brushes so you can just see how they compare. We have the Fan M, which is going to be significantly smaller. You can see how much smaller that is, both in you know overall size as well as the width. And then we also have Fan A. So you can see Fan A here is also gonna be smaller, but notice that we have kind of this asymmetric side. So if we put the three of these together, you can see how much larger Fan L is overall and how these all compare to each other. Stack those evenly. So you can see we definitely have a change in size for each of these brushes. Overall, I think this is a really great brush. I have to say the Sculpt one I've had for a few years, I don't reach for it that often, but uh, you know, a lot of that reason for me is partly due to the fundamental, the original fundamental handles. The barrel style is just so large, takes so much space that it's usually one that I keep in a drawer instead. So I do actually really like this for powder and so forth. Although these are the same brush head and the same dimensions and so forth, perhaps because this one's newer, but it just feels, these by the way have been washed and dried, it just feels a little bit finer and it could just be like, you know, a different batch of hair and so forth. So it does feel a little bit easier. It doesn't feel quite as fluffy, quite as thick this way. So it is easier to get under the eye and so forth. So I actually really like it for that. So after trying this one, I do think this is one that I'm going to put into my rotation for that particular purpose. You know, I think it's really great to give your face a light dusting of powder, you know, setting powder and so forth. It also works really well for bronzer and contour, but I think for me, I do already have favorite bronzer brushes. I love the Synergy Soft Bronze, is it this? The Jumbo Bronzer. That's the one that I use all the time from Synergy. So, um, you know, that's probably still gonna be my go-to, but this would definitely be one that I could take with me if I were traveling or something, if I wanted to have something for face powder and so forth. I do think it's a little bit too large for blush and highlight, but if you're super careful, you could totally do it that way as well. And one more comparison here for the Fan L. This is the Niji. This is actually the travel size, but the large one is the same. I just want to show you the difference in size for these. This is gonna be a denser uh, fan brush. You can see it's gonna be wider overall. It actually kind of, it's wider this way and a little bit this way as well. It's gonna be soft, it's dense, it's great for bronzer as well. So I uh, just wanted to show you that one, but they're similar, but definitely not that similar. Next up, we have Fan M. And this is formerly the Sculpt 2. You can see we have the exact same heads on here. And let's take a look at the demos here while we talk about the application. This brush is gonna be a little bit firmer and a little bit more dense. It's very, very soft to the touch, but just the way that this is bundled gives it a little bit more density and allows you to create a little bit more pressure on the face with this one. So this brush, according to Sonia G, she actually designed it specifically for some of the blushes she was using at the time that she created this Sculpt 2, which were a lot of Japanese brushes like Suku and Addiction and 3 and so forth. So because a lot of those blushes are very sheer light wash, well, light washes of color. She wanted something to apply them very quickly that she didn't have to continually add and build more product to get the color that she wanted. And that's what this brush was designed for. I have to say, I think it works beautifully for that. And that is actually what I like to use the Sculpt 2 for. 
So um, yeah, that is definitely a great purpose for that. It's great for, for example, the Suku Pure Color blushes. For the Melting Powder blushes, you don't really need something quite that firm and that dense, but I mean, you obviously could use it, but it's really ideal for those really light ones. For example, think of the Sisley Lorca Day blushes and so forth. So any of those light washes of color blushes that you kind of have to build and go in over and over with, this brush is really great for that. It's not great. I did use it for powder. You can see it does do a nice job laying on powder. It does seem to go on a little bit more strongly than the Fan L, but it does do a nice job with that. The smaller size allows you to get into crevices and so forth. So it's decent with face powder. Um, you could use this for highlight. I do have a different brush I prefer for highlight. I like, we'll get to that, but I, I think the Fan A is better for that as well as the newest brush, the Worker L. So it could be used for highlight. You can see in the demo, I did use it for bronzer, but it's not great for bronzer. It's just a little bit dense. So you don't really buff it out as smoothly or as nicely as you would with a different brush. So it's not great for bronzer. You could totally use it for contour to apply it exactly where you want it. But if you really want to buff it out and kind of shear those edges, you would want to utilize a different brush with this as well. So let's take a look at this closer. And I just want to bring back the Worker L for a second, just so you can see, you know, just like the original brushes, we do have this curvature here on these ferrules. These are pinched ferrules. This is what's giving us our fan shape. And this, you know, was something that carried through from the Sculpt 2. And you can see that our brush heads are identical with these. And yeah, I mean, overall, I think this is a really nice brush. So when you see it on the skin, you can see that if you were to use this for blush, it really, it gives you a lot more density up here where the ferrule kind of reaches its peak. So it really applies the blush in a really beautiful manner because you get more pigmentation right here where these bristles are touching and a softer application on the side where it helps kind of blend out with, you know, the rest of your skin. So it doesn't look like a heavy swatch of blush. This is the Sonia G base brush from the Lotus set. This is gonna be your fusion style brush bristles. So we're looking at undyed Psycho as well as two different types of synthetic fibers. And I just wanted to compare the size to this because we do have a similar shape. However, you can see that here, it's essentially this shape if our ferrule went all the way up here instead. So it's kind of just like a truncated version of it and obviously different bristle fibers. So if you have this brush, you'll know that we're kind of looking at the same type of brush, but instead our bristles are gonna start here, just a little bit below that pinch from the ferrule. I also wanted to show you the Worker Fan from the Sky series. And you can see that these are gonna be a little different. The Worker Fan here is gonna be a bit larger. It does have a similar shape, but this is gonna be airier and lighter. We don't have quite as much density here. That's partly due to our uh, larger shape here and the side being larger as well, you know, overall in, in width. <laughs> so because of that, it's gonna make it a little fluffier, a little airier. So this one I think is better for, uh, you know, something like a highlight. It also works well with the blushes, but it's gonna give you a larger area. So I actually prefer the Fan M for that. Again, I think this is really great for Japanese style blushes or anything really light. So next we're looking at Fan A. And in this case, the A stands for angled. So although she probably mentions this in her blog, I, my guess is that L is large and M is medium for the others. And then we have A for angled, which is specifically mentioned in her blog. This has replaced the Sculpt 4. You can see that we do have this nice curved angle here. So this is gonna give you a little bit more density here on this side. And where the bristles are longer, we're gonna have a little bit more airiness, less pressure and so forth. Now this brush, this works really well for highlight. So you can definitely use it for that. I think it performs well for that. Um, but really for me, there's one thing in particular I really like this for. And my friend Bonnie, uh, if you don't follow her on Instagram, she has the best swatches. She's 
at La Bon Maquillage. I'll leave her Instagram handle down below, but she actually recommended it for me. So I like to use this for powder under the eye, but what she recommended is for using this for cleanup here. So it gives you just like kind of the right pressure for cleanup if you are trying to, you know, clean up any fallout or residue here. So uh, this, you know, I'm pretty sure it was this brush that she recommended, but it's definitely one of the fans, but that's what I use this one for based off of her recommendation. I think it's fantastic. Having just a little bit more pressure here really helps with cleanup. You can use this because it is undyed Psycho goat hair. You can use this with liquids and creams and so forth. So you could use this with a little bit of concealer if you want a little powder. I often just use it plain just to remove any extra dust and so forth. You could also use this around the, you know, smaller areas like your nose and so forth. You could really use it for contour if you really want it to. Oh my goodness, there is a bug on my face. Um, I just paused it and took Sadie outside. Um, so I'm guessing I caught a, an ant on me while I was outside with her. So excuse that. But, um, yeah, anyway, this brush, <laughs> that is what I like to use it for. And I think since she told me about, you know, that suggestion to use it that way, it's kind of been a game changer. So I've actually been keeping the Sculpt 4 just right here with, you know, in a cup right next to all of my brushes, kind of separate it. And I use it every day just for a little bit of cleanup. And yeah, I'm very happy with this one. I think it is great. I personally prefer these handles over the original fundamentals because not only are they easier to store, I prefer the appearance as well. And I did just wanna mention here that compared to the Pro Series and the Sky Series, we have a very similar size and shape for the handles but they are not 100% exactly the same. So Sonia G mentions that they are similar, but not the same. So I did want to make sure I mentioned that. You can see though, like honestly, I can't really, aside from the size difference in these because they are different brushes, I don't really notice any major changes, obviously in the shape. So, but I did want to mention that. So the Fan A brush again has replaced Sculpt 4 and we've looked at that. Because of that angle, I feel like there aren't really any other comparisons that I have, but I did want to show you how the base brush from the Lotus set goes because if you're looking at the smaller side of Fan A, that is essentially the same as the base brush here. So you're looking at it starting like here and then we just go a little bit longer, but those are gonna be pretty close to being the same on the shortest end. So I think that is a fairly decent comparison there. And just one more time, this is the Fan M so you can see the difference. And just one last one, this is the Fan Pro. You can see this is significantly smaller. If I had to choose a fan brush for highlight, this is one that I like to use a lot. And then as you know, for fan brushes, I personally really like to use the Refer fan brush as well as the Omnia Gold also. And let me just show you those. Those are like larger and wispier, but this Fan Pro is one that I use a lot as well. So personally, you can use these for highlight, but these are my preferences for highlight. I just like the lighter application I get with these because they are a bit wispier. All right, next let's take a look at the Classic Cheek. So this is the same brush as the Classic Face from the original Kiyaki set. You can see we do have the full size handles. Brush heads are exactly the same. Let's take a look at this in the demos, but this Classic Cheek is a great brush. If you missed out on it in the Kiyaki set, this is a really nice brush. Now, when it came in the Kiyaki set, that is the travel set, and you know that is your face brush. It's kind of like your largest brush you can use for like powder, blush, and so forth. But having in the larger handles with all of these other brushes on a regular day-to-day -day basis, I'm really not gonna use this for face powder. I would use it for face powder in strategic areas, but not for all over face powder. So this is one that's really great to get powder like around the nose and so forth. But really for this one, I like this for blush. And you know, I think it is a great blush brush you could use it for highlight if you want, but really for me, this is a classic blush brush. And we do have a mix of dyed and undyed goat fibers here, Psycho Goat. 
And so this would be best for powder applications. Let's take a look at some comparisons. Now, the first brush I want to compare it to is the Classic Cheek from the Sky Series because they're both called the Classic Cheek. So just something to know. I did check, this is my favorite blush brush. So I, well, from Sonia G, and I checked, this is not being discontinued. They're both just carrying the same name in different series. You can see that our shapes are not the same. This is Undyed Psycho Goat. You can see that this, although it's still an oval ferrule, both of them are oval ferrules, the one in the Sky series is slightly more rounded. And we also have more, more of a dome. Because this is more rounded, it's almost a round cheek brush. This is definitely more pinched. So application style is gonna be best with like either a brush like this or like a sweeping motion or a patty motion. Doing swirling is going to be better with the Sky Series brush versus this. So that is just something I wanted to share with you on that. And a couple other comparisons. This is another one of my all time favorite blush brushes. This is the KZ4, it's discontinued. It's from Chikahoto. And you can see that our brush shape is very similar, although the KZ4 does have a round ferrule. So, uh, but you can see that the bristle sizes are similar. KZ4 slightly larger. And again, it's more rounded, but they do have some similarities there. So I think this is a great brush. I just wanted to show you how the sizes compare in case you have that. If you're familiar with Chikahoto brushes, they are gonna run shorter than the Sonia G. This is the Sonia G cheek brush from the Lotus set. And this is the same as the Cheek Pro brush, just undyed goat hair. So you can see that we're, we have a, pinch ferrule, this will actually fan out a little bit more, it's slightly more dense. You can see that this one is gonna be a little bit airier, whereas our cheek lotus, lotus brush is gonna be a bit more dense. You don't see it kind of fluffing out as much when I swirl this compared to the uh, classic cheek here. So just something to note there, but you can see that shape-wise they're similar, but this is gonna be a little bit broader, a little bit wider in the Lotus series. It's shorter and a little bit more dense. This is the Designer Pro from Sonia G, and you can see that our shape here is gonna be a little bit different. This is kind of a little bit, the length is actually about the same. It's slightly longer in the Designer Pro, but you can see that this is gonna be more narrow, and our fibers, you know, really kind of taper off and we get that blunt tip. These also taper off, but they start tapering off at a higher level. So we're left with a more boxy shape in comparison to the Designer Pro. Now you can see that this one also, you know, will kind of, it's a little bit firmer to stay in place. It's not as airy as the classic face. So just some differences there. And then the last one I wanted to compare it to is the Chikahoto and Beautylish collab brush. So this is the cheek brush there. You can see we do have a similar shape. The Chikahoto Beautylish brush is gonna be a little bit longer. You can see that our ferrule is more pinched here, here and that's gonna give it a even stronger sweeping motion compared to the uh, classic cheek here, which if you really wanted to, you could swirl, but you can see as I'm swirling how it kind of kicks. It has a little like, um, you know, it kind of just kind of retracts back on itself. And you can see the difference with that. It's definitely more effective with this, but honestly, either both of them are not really intended for that swirly motion. And next up we have the soft buffer. And this is going to be a buffing brush because we do have a stronger core of dense bristles kind of in the center. This is Undyed Psycho. Again, I have some blush residue on mine right now, but you can see it's great for a swirling motion. It does have that round ferrule. Let's take a look at the demos while we talk about this. For me, I particularly really like this brush for blush. And you know, if you are looking for a very softly buffed effect, so you don't wanna really buff that in, work it into the skin too much, but you want a little bit of buffing, that's what this brush is for. It works really well with, you know, getting a slightly stronger application for some lighter blushes. You can also use this with more pigmented blushes to get a softer application of them. So just kind of dip into your deeper pigmented blushes, tap off any excess and use this kind of, you know, very softly against the face. 
you could use this for finishing powders like the Guerlain Meteorites. Again, with something like the Guerlain Meteorites, I do think those give you a little bit less of that shimmery appearance if you buff it in more strongly with something like the Buffer Pro. But if you want a little bit more of that glittery appearance, you know, from all of the residue at the bottom of the container, this is the kind of brush that you would want to use that for. So it works really well for finishing powder if you want a very light, soft application of something. So overall, I think this is a really nice brush, but I personally really like it for blush application in general. It can, however, be used for many other purposes. So this brush was formerly called the Face 2. I never got that one. You know, I wanted it, but it was always sold out. So I, I missed out on that one. But we have the Sonia G Classic Cheek here for comparison. We just looked at that. You can see this is going to be a bit more domed. And you can see that we have slightly more density with the Classic Cheek in the Sky series versus that of the Soft Buffer. So this is a little bit airier than that. Another brush I wanted to compare to, this is from the Hakahoto Winter Lights series. And you can see that this shape is very similar, but it's shorter. This is gonna be, again, a little bit more dense. This will also perform well as a buffer. And actually, I feel like, although you might think that this one, because it's shorter, is gonna give you a firmer application, it does to a point, but they actually feel very similar on the skin. So even though this one's longer, we do get a little bit better, of, if you're using it for blush, a little bit better of that softer application on the sides with this versus the Hakahoto, but the core part of the bristles feel very similar on the skin. So they're both gonna provide that same type of application. I also wanted to show you the Refer 37. You can see that, again, both of these uh, brushes have round ferrules. We've got a similar head shape with the Refer 37. The Refer 37 though is going to be a little bit larger in diameter. This is one of my favorite blush brushes. You can see this is going to have again a similar appearance. However, this is slightly airier. This, although it's a little bit wider overall, it also those excess hairs feel a little bit more tightly bundled to give it a little bit more density in the refer versus the soft buffer. So, And then this is the soft cheek from Sonia G. You can see again, similar shape, but these are your longer fibers. And again, this also has a round ferrule, but you can see that this, because it does have the longer bristles, it just performs slightly different. You're gonna get more buffing action from the soft buffer. And if we bring in the classic cheek, just for comparison with these, you can see the difference. So again, the fact that this has a round ferrule though is going to allow it to give you that swirling buffing motion that you can't really get so well from the classic cheek in this series. My last comparison for this is the Surratt cheek brush, which also has a round ferrule, but you can see we have longer bristles here. This is squirrel hair, so it's really gonna give you a very, very soft application. You're not going to get any sort of buffing capabilities really with this brush. It's just a too soft. The density and the pressure that you need for buffing is not there in the Surratt, but I did wanna show you that the diameter is pretty similar between the two brushes. But again, we have the undyed goat hair here, which will fan out a little bit more and provide a little bit of an airier buffing capability. And next up, I want to introduce you to the new brush in this series, and this is the Worker L. And I have to say, I really love this brush. At first glance, it might remind you of the Detail Pro. We'll look at that in a second, but let's look at the demo. This is really going to be a brush for details. It is very soft. You have dyed goat hair here. It is ideal for under the eyes. It has a little bit more firmness and density than brushes like the Detail Pro, which are a little bit airier in texture. This allows you to kind of really work in the powder if you are trying to, you know, really add, add more product. You know, you, you don't want just the lightest, sheerest, sheerest wash of something. You actually want to kind of work it in. This brush is great for that while still being soft and the size is ideal to get into, you know, smaller places. I really like this for adding, you know, highlighter or eyeshadow, you know, above the eyebrow arch. 
or well in the eyebrow arch uh, under the eyes it's fantastic is great for highlight it's great for contour around the nose powder around the nose you know any of those small detail areas that's where this brush really excels i think this is a great brush if you have brushes in the original fundamental handles and you're trying to decide what to get I would actually recommend, this is my number one choice from this, you know, if, if you already have other ones. So we'll go through all of my choices, you know, my rankings, uh, you know, at the end of the video, but let's move on to some comparisons. So I wanted to start here with the Detail Pro and you can see that they do have a similar shape. The Detail Pro is a bit smaller. They both have the round ferrule, but you can see that we've got shorter bristles here. And look at this, you know, because we have that mix of hair fibers in the Detail Pro, it's actually pretty airy. You can see how well it moves and how much it spreads out versus this one here. You can see how much straighter the bristles kind of stay. It has more density. It has more structure to it. So it really performs well to, to give you a little bit more precision than the detail pro was the detail probe is great for light dustings of powder and so forth but if you want to have more precision with that and you want perhaps a, a you know a little bit more product in that layer that's what this uh, worker l is great for so you can see they are similar but they're going to be different and i would say just because they look similar they are different enough that you could definitely have both of these now, a few others that I want to compare it to. This is from LH Cosmetics, the Linda Hallberg line. These are synthetic brushes. This is the 306. So I just wanted to show you the size here because you can see that we have a similar size. However, this has a pinched ferrule. So we're looking at our tapering on these sides here, whereas this is gonna be round. So it kind of tapers all together in the center. But let me just show you, this has, you know, kind of that, stiffer motion as well this however is not that soft <laughs> so uh you know definitely the sony g is going to crush this one i honestly don't use this too much i do use it for liquids and cream products um and that's where i think this one excels but for all other purposes i would reach for the sony g i also wanted to compare it to the Surat. this is going to be the uh, grande smoky eye brush and Obviously very different shapes, very different purposes. I just wanted to show you that our ferrule diameters are about the same and show you how they compare. So if you have this brush and you're trying to figure out the size, it is comparable to where we start kind of getting that, um, getting the longer hairs in the Surat brush. So that's kind of where it cuts off there. And again, we're gonna have about the same diameter of the brush so this is actually meant for eyeshadow you can use it for highlight you can use it under the eyes but this will give you a much lighter application this is actually intended for kind of a windshield wiper motion on the eyes for blending and so forth as well so just a one more comparison here this is the chikahoto z11 and i just wanted to show you this because i know this is a brush a lot of people have this is actually an eye brush, it's a crease brush, but I just wanted to show you the size comparison so you can see how that kind of matches up. And again, they're both gonna have round ferrules. This is definitely too large, in my opinion, for a crease brush, but again, it's gonna work great, like right here, 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 you know, all of those smaller areas, and I think it's just a fantastic brush. So let's talk about these overall. You can purchase a set all together. You do not get a discount for purchasing Sonia G brushes as a set. They can be bundled as a set to make it easier to get some of them and so forth instead of adding each individual one to your cart. But these brushes are all available individually. This is a permanent line, so it's not going anywhere anytime soon. However, once they sell out, there is kind of a, a time lag while you're waiting for production, but they will be coming back. And again, they'll be sold individually and as a set, just like the Pro and the Sky series. Now, as I mentioned, if you already have the Fundamental Brush Series, that is going to include these four brushes. If you have the Kiyaki, we're looking at this one. So the Fundamentals, those are now Fan L, Fan M, Fan A, and the uh, Soft Buffer, okay? So you might already have these. This one here, the Classic Cheek, was the 
classic face in the original Kiyaki set. So you could have that. The only new brush here is the Worker L. If you already have some of these brushes, I say the Worker L is definitely one to pick up. If you don't wanna get repeats and you're looking to buy individually, this is the one I would get. If, however, you don't have any of these brushes, I would first go based off of, you know, what you have a purpose for, of course. You know, see what, what gaps you need to fill in your collection. But my personal preference out of these, which are my favorites, if I had to rank them, I would go with the Worker L. That is my number one from the series. I really like that. Then I would have to go with the Fan A because I really like it for cleaning up around the eyes. So those would be my top two. Then from there, it's kind of a toss up between the Classic Cheek and the Soft Buffer because it kind of depends on what other blush brushes and that shape you have already. I do actually have quite a few of these already, but I really like them. So if I didn't have any of them, my choice would first be the Soft Buffer, then the Classic Cheek. And then after that, I prefer the Fan L and then the Fan M. Now, although I'm ranking those, those are in my orders of personal preference. That doesn't mean that I dislike any of these. I love all of these brushes and I plan to use all of them, but I do think that uh, that's gonna be the order in which I use them most frequently. So I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know, you know what your thoughts are on this series. I have to say, I really love the new walnut handles with the matte black ferrules. I think they are gorgeous. And I love the addition. I, I love these updates to this line. So very happy to see these. Again, thank you so much to Sonia G and Beautylish for sending these to me. These are, of course, brushes I would have ordered myself regardless because, you know, I think Sonia G brushes are just incredible. I think you get, you know, you really get the bang for your buck with these, you know, you can spend a lot on some other brands, maybe you can spend less, but I feel like this is kind of your sweet, perfect balance of, you know, getting the value for your money, high quality for, you know, reasonable prices. Yes, they can be expensive, you know, they, they add up, but you're getting a lot of quality for what you're paying for, in my opinion. So I think they are fantastic and Thank, you know, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful and I will see you very soon. Have a wonderful day.